kids, they don't help either. The other day I told my kid, I said, someday you'll have children of your own. He said, so are you. <laughs> ah, you kid, now you kid, I know I'm ugly. I asked a bartender to make me a zombie, told me God beat him to it. <laughs> Destroy my life. No respect. I don't got no respect at all. You no respect at all. You know. What you want, baby, I got. What you need, do you know I got it? All I'm asking for a little respect when you come on in. Hollywood, this is Rodney talking to you. Oh, I know what you think of me. You think I'm a clown. Sure. Put him in a loud pair of pants, let him tell jokes. Well, you buy a hat like this, I'll bet you get a free bowl of soup, huh? Oh, it looks good on you, though. But I'm deeper than that. And my new movie, Lady Bugs, is gonna prove it. You'll finally see the other side of Rodney Dangerfield. The artistic depth I'm capable of. My soulfulness, my caring. My compassion for people. Shut up, moron! Up yours, jerk off! My sensitivity. My tenderness. Roll one. Hey! 175 Union, take five. Okay, action. Rodney! Well, you look like a coach. You know anything else about soccer? Not much. All I know is, I got a lot of balls. I'll tell you, Ladybug started out great. I was getting some respect. Love was in the air. After you, I'm gonna jack a kazoo back to you. Then, then after that, I'm in Martha, right? They even gave me a shot at directing. It was great. Well, for the first time, I was telling women what to do. You're liberated. You got the boat. You can burn your bras. When do you get them? <laughs> in every movie, you're always who you are, but a shade different. In other words, in the Caddyshack hours of... I'm me, but it was a loud-mouthed guy, right? Jeez, I had better food at the ball game, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you, this steak still has marks where the jockey was hitting. <laughs> Easy money, I was a different type of guy, you know? It was me, but a different type of guy. You're an ecological menace. Yeah, well, you were the inspiration for twin beds. And uh, back to school, I was a rich guy, you know? <laughs> You're all right, officer. Huh? Hey, a little something for the kids. Okay, take that. It's okay, huh? I don't have any kids. No, because we're here. Get yourself some kids. We're here. Take it all, all right? Oh. This movie here, Ladybugs, I'm not rich. I'm a guy who's trying to make it in life, you know? Tomorrow morning, I'm seeing the big boss. My promotion is in the bag. I can hear those wedding bells now. Chester, my company sponsors a girls' soccer team, the Ladybugs. If you can take this bunch of beginners and turn them into a winning team, that, to me, shows leadership. What the hell do you know about soccer? Nothing. It just happened. I was kissing the boss's ass. His wife came in. I started kissing her ass. The next thing you know, they made me coach in a soccer team. I, as his assistant, help him. And neither one of us know anything about soccer, so he's basically fluffing his way through it, lying. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't know what he's doing, and neither do I. Neither do the girls. <laughs> Try and control the ball. Forget the ball. Try and stay in your feet. Okay, cut. <laughs> oh, I love working with Rodney. We go together like, uh, you know, yin and yang. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, working with Jack Kay is really great. It's her first movie she's doing Dynamite, you know? She does a lot of television work. Yeah, last week she fixed four sets. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you, working with her is really even an experience. A lot of hard work. I mean, uh, I had to teach her an awful lot. She didn't know comedy too good. I had to show her the ropes, how to deliver her What are you talking about, Rodney? I... What are you talking about? You gotta show me now that I had my own show for years, for years. I'm good, I'm funny. Hey, I got an Emmy. <sighs> Be nice, will you? I'll tell everybody how you got the Emmy. Suddenly, on the set, I felt the mood was changing. Well, the whole thing was going back to my childhood. I got no respect then either. Well, my old man, he carried around a picture of the kid who came with the wallet. What a childhood. The time I asked my old man if I can go ice skating on a lake, he told me to wait till it gets warmer. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy being me. When I was born, the doctor told my mother I did all I could, but he pulled through anyway. Yeah, kid, I was an ugly kid, too. How ugly? How ugly? <laughs> I was so ugly, my mother breastfed me through a straw. I started writing jokes at 15, and uh, tried to get work in show business, and... It's very difficult. I tell you, my whole life, all I know is rejection. When I was a kid, my yo-yo, it never came back. 
In my case, I have an image. Nothing goes right. And if you have an image, you can apply anything to it. It goes, you know, uh, my bank told me if I close my account, they'll give me a toaster, you know? But I mean, nothing comes easy, nothing. Well, last week, I took one of those cheap flights in an airline. I finished eating how to do the dishes. <laughs> She said it was a very good deal. And look, honey, it's a two-story house. Two-story house, yeah. yeah. Before you buy it, they give you one story. After you move in, you get another story. My earliest memories of Rodney are his appearances on The Ed Sullivan Show. He presented such a strong character with that suit and that red necktie and the, and the, and the twitching and, the, you know, the, all of that. Oh, I was arrested for jaywalking. and the crowd kept yelling, don't take him alive! <laughs> And the thing that impressed me about his movies was that he actually was able to show that sad sack side. And Matthew and I, we're getting along better. Oh, last Christmas, we weren't getting along at all. And I gave him a BB gun, he gave me a sweatshirt with a bullseye and a bat. In the movie, Jonathan Brandis was perfect for the role of Matthew. Oh, Jonathan, great kid, great kid. You kid? I'm like a father to him. Yeah, he keeps asking me for money. Well, I can't say I blame him, considering what I make him do in the movie. No, you're crazy, Chester. It'll never happen. Meet our new ladybug, Martha. Give her a big ladybug reception, all right? <laughs> Matthew dresses up like a girl because uh, he wants Chester to get his promotion, but he can't let out the secret that there's, uh, you know, a guy on a girl's soccer team. Now all the girls are going skinny-dipping. I'm here to pick up my daughter, Martha. Martha, your mother's here. I tell you, in show business, he knew some strange things. <laughs> well, when I started out, I even worked as a singing waiter. I went up to work one place once, and I was way up in the Bronx. I was 18, and the boss says to me, Hey, we're not using an MC this week. The waiter's doing MC. I'll give you a nickel car fare back, 10 cents for somebody's or a nickel then, you know? So being a true thespian, I said to him, Can I be a waiter for the night? I said, I want to make some money, you know? But while I was there, I noticed I had singing waiters. They would throw money at them, you know? I said, wow. I practically begged the guy to become a singing waiter. Oh, and being a singing waiter came in handy later on. I'm king, no I was made for fun and frolic. And so do I, and so do I. Some think it's right to be so melancholic. It's the fine and shy. All right, place your bets, place your bets. Right after this break. They say music can make or break a movie. Here we go. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Oh, I was really flattered when they asked me to record a song for Ladybugs. Oh, really? Well, goodness gracious, great balls of pie. I let the love come about as a party. You came along and you moved me, honey. I changed my mind. This love is mine. And goodness gracious, great balls of pie. Kiss me, baby. Ooh. <laughs> Feels good. Hold it, hold it. Where you hold it? I'm getting landing instructions here. The things that Rodney does with this song are... Unbelievable. <laughs> I chew my nails and I write on my thumb. I'm real nervous, but it sure is fun. You know, cut, cut. I mean, you know, you know, Rodney, I love you and everything. I'm glad you gave me a chance in this movie and everything. But you know, you, you left your rhythm at home. I know you're funny and everything, but you I don't know about that singing stuff, you know. It's not my fault. I told him to give me songs with no high notes. Oh, back in a the set there were new problems. I love working with Rodney. He's uh, so accommodating. He's always there when I need him. All right. Now, can I have the negative back? Well, my assistant was the only one I could rely on. Yeah. I good. love you, baby. You're driving a boat. Never miss it. It's great to work with people who are reliable. We never have an argument. He's on top of it. He knows just what he's doing. It's really beautiful. I love him. He's always right there, you know? Thank you, Rodney. That's very nice of you to say that. Give me some more Mountain Valley water, will you? Oh, we ran out of it. I was I forgot to order some more. Um, you forgot to order? I was going to call you. You're an today. idiot, you know that? You can't but, do nothing right. You're a top dope. What are you doing here? Get was, me some Mountain Valley water. I was Get me the water, you yeah, idiot. Fun. Oh, and a director. He was no help either. Why, every time he looked at me, he told me I had no good side. Maybe I should get a facelift. My luck to be one just like it underneath. Well, 
Well, there's always problems. Why, well, the guys in wardrobe, they always give me a hard time, too. Twelve inches. Oh, you're way off. I'm not fashion conscious at all. I know nothing about clothes. And that's the way it is. First time I did the Ed Sullivan show, I got dressed and I wore a black suit and a red tie and a white shirt. Then I did well and he brought me back to do another show. What am I going to wear the second time? I thought to myself, I don't know what to wear. I can't figure it out. I wear the same thing. And that went on through 16 Sullivan shows. I wore the same thing and I did the Tonight Show 70 times, the same thing. So I got known for, for a red tie and a white shirt and a black suit quite by accident. I'm ugly, I'm telling you, my proctologist, he stuck his finger in my mouth. <laughs> and uh, to my surprise, they told me that the red tie and white shirt's in the Smithsonian Institute now, <laughs> Washington. When they put it up there next to Lindbergh's plane, and I thought to myself, probably use my shirt to dust off his plane, I guess, you know. <laughs> I tell you, I got along great with all the kids in the movie. Oh, but sometimes you can't be too friendly. <laughs> nice smile. That's Vanessa Shaw, you know. She plays Kimberly, my boss's daughter, huh? <laughs> Who's a great-looking little girl, huh? I'll go over and take a picture with her. She'll get a kick. It'll make her day, you know? <laughs> hey, Vanessa, how you doing, baby? Huh? Oh, hi. Hi, how are you? you, you, you Oh, you cute little thing, you know? We're gonna take a picture together. Come okay. over here, you <laughs> son of a gun. Hey, 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 I told you to keep your hands off my daughter. Now stay away from her. Oh, I hate parents who are overprotective. I think you're a very handsome man. Ooh, whenever I get a chance to get lucky, the situation's impossible. I added from the script that we decided to shoot, I would say a minimum of a a minimum of 30 to 40 new lines in the movie after we had it all set. You know what they say, plenty of fish in the sea if you got the right bait. Yeah. The trouble is, my hook ain't what it used to be. The same way with back to school. When I did that, I'd think of lines right in the spot there quickly, you know? Like, uh, I remember the, the scene ended in the bookstore when I said, hey, Shakespeare for everyone, okay? <laughs> Then I got an idea, and I looked at the girl and said, uh, oh, you too, honey. Ooh, I'd like to tame your shrew. <laughs> and it was just a play on words that made sense there, but you write things constantly when you're doing it. They come to you, you know? I'll sing a rush. Oh, writing movies has its advantages. Flying ladybugs, I wrote myself a love scene. Hey, this is my big scene where I kiss Bess. <laughs> I've been waiting a whole movie for this, huh? Ooh, like, this will be terrific, I'll tell you. <laughs> ah, roll, please. Marker, 235, take one. Action. <laughs> Best baby. You know I love you, huh? <laughs> mm. Okay, cut. Stand in. Thanks. Well, it's things like this that made me quit the business. This is like a comeback for me in show business. I was in show business years ago and I quit. And to give you an idea how well I was doing at the time I quit, I was the only one who knew I quit. <laughs> I quit show business when I was 28. Went out of show business for years and, uh, you know, I was trying to lead a normal life. During the absence, I was always writing jokes and writing jokes. And finally, when I came back, I matured to a degree. And uh, it's a tough business, but sometimes you do what you feel like doing, you know. I mean, every time I get in an elevator, the operator says the same thing to me. Basement? <laughs> with me is I'm self-destructive. I hate myself. Why? I'll tell you, I hate myself so much when girls tell me yes, I tell them to think it over. <laughs> My uh, career was a very gradual thing. There wasn't one show that did it. It was a building thing that slowly went along, you know. Nothing happens quick. You can get a guy like Elvis Presley did one song and the country went nuts, you know. But uh, mine was a slow, steady thing that never was one thing particularly that made me uh, whatever I am. <laughs> I'll tell you, my wife always gave me a hard time. I remember the first time I took her out, I got her home. I said to her, I'd like to see what your apartment is like. She drew me a sketch. <laughs> I was brought up in a live audience, you know, when I was a kid working. And there's nothing like an immediate reaction. You know, you tell a joke, you get a reaction, boom, you can you have a romance with an audience, you know. When I was an ugly kid, too, I told my old man, never took me to the zoo. He said, if they want you, they'll come and get you. <laughs> Boy, that's the story of my life. No respect. I don't get no respect. I just felt in life, it's tough to work it out. Nothing ever goes right. The best laid plans, you know? 
Then after I was on the Ed Sullivan show about three or four times, I sort of picked up the fact that I don't get no respect, I thought. And the first joke got a laugh, and I started writing more jokes and more jokes and more jokes, and uh, it seems that everyone identifies with it. Well, I was drowning. I was yelling, help, help, and the lifeguard ran over. So I said, like, buddy, keep it down, keep it down. <laughs> I don't get no respect from anyone. Everyone feels the boss picked on him, the girl stood him up, the guy in traffic yelled at him, but everyone feels every day you're not being treated properly by somebody. And when I say I don't get no respect, I'm sort of speaking for the masses, you know? I played hide and seek when I was free. No respect, no respect. Why they wouldn't even look for me? No respect, no respect. I was an ugly kid, I never had fun. No respect. No respect. They took me to a dog show and I won. No respect. No respect. Friends don't call, my phone don't ring. I don't get a break with anything. What's the matter, Rodney? Ah, death, where is my sting? It's just rapping Rodney. Ain't that your type? The little boys and girls, when they played doctor, they made me an outpatient. No, no, Rodney. Get out of sight. Now, last week, I told my wife, you need a home improvement loan. She gave me $1,000 to move out. It's just Rappin' Rodney. Make no mistake. I joined Gamblers Anonymous. They gave me two to one. I don't make it. Oh, oh, Rappin' Rodney. Can't get a break. It's getting worse. It's caving in. The heaviness. I, I like awkward jokes. Well, you'll hear someone say something, and it sparks off a joke if you can twist it around. You know what I mean? Like uh, the other day, someone says to me, uh, a man over there, he lost his wife, he's very unhappy. I said, what happened? She found her way home? And they all laughed. Now last week my car broke down. I tell you what, my car got nothing but trouble. Every Sunday I take my family out for a push. So the joke originates when you hear something and switch it around. I'm watching football last week and I hear the two minute warning. I think to myself, what's the big deal, a two-minute warning? Every player knows they have two minutes to play. What kind of warning is that? To me, a two-minute warning is you're in bed with a chick. The phone rings. Her husband's on his car phone, says, I'll be home in two minutes. That's a two-minute warning. <laughs> oh, my wife. Oh, one night she told me she felt romantic. I took her to a drive-in movie. I spent the whole night trying to find out what car she was in. <laughs> There's no perfection in life, in relationships, Marriages, love affairs, children, no perfection. And the only place you can find some perfection is in your work. And I tell you, it's not easy being me. Well, last week my house was on fire. My wife told the kids, be quiet, you'll wake up daddy. You try to make it as perfect as you can, like without appearing in a talk show. People think you get up there and kid around, right? It used to take me three months to prepare a talk show. Between the stand-up and the panel and the whole thing, and I would take time out and break it all down. I needed 32 new jokes that were all funny, this and that. And, and that's how long it would take me to prepare six or eight minutes. I would have it all prepared a week before the show, then devote the last week strictly to memorizing it and then making believe it's happening right off the cuff. Hey, my wife can't do nothing right. She can't cook the worst cook in the world. Gave my kid alphabet soup. He spelled out help. <laughs> He cook. I mean, how can toast have bones? <laughs> I mean, if she can't cook at all, my backyard, the flies chipped in to fix the screen door. So, you want to do something when it's over that you're proud of, that you feel you did the best you could and it came out right. My wife and I are going away for the weekend. I want to see better results. We'll be back on Monday, if not sooner. He won't be back any sooner. That's it? That's perfect. I did Rodney's HBO special, uh, The Really Big Show. And I did a small three-line part. You know, if you're, if you're going to watch this, don't blink, because I'm out of there. But from that three lines, they hired me for this movie. And that's indicative of how helpful Rodney has been to comedians. And he's done this for a lot of people. He's really great. Jerry Seinfeld, all right? Here we go. Bob Saget, how about it? All right, Bobby, here we are now. Okay, Louis Anderson, okay, Louis. Right, Sam Kinison, okay, here we are, Sammy. All right, baby, there you are. There we are, baby, I love you. I know how tough it is for a comedian 
but when he starts. And if I see a guy who I think is funny, uh, it's my pleasure to try to move him along. Here, let the people see him. What? Like Sam, he's one of a kind. I mean, he was great in back to school. You remember that thing we had about 30 years ago called that Korean conflict? How come we didn't cross the 38th parallel and push those rice eaters back to the Great Wall of China and take the first big break, break and new deal back into the Stone Age River? How come? Tell me why? Say it! Say it! Oh, good teacher. He really seems to care about what I have no idea. <laughs> Say hello to Andrew Dice Clay. Okay, here we go. Now. Hey, Andrew, hey. hey. Robert Townsend has really died about it. Okay, Robert, here we are. All right, well, Dan Barr, here we are. Baby. I met Roseanne about five or six years ago in Vegas, and I said, what a voice, what a personality. She's the perfect woman who could give me trouble. <laughs> Honey, you told me not to talk about sex until we got married. Well, we're married. Well, now you can talk about it all you want. <laughs> There's no problem. Just tell me when you want sex. I'll leave the room to give you privacy. In life, it's tough to win. Nobody wins in life. It's tough. You go through it, nothing goes right, everything is wrong. So if you can have people win in their fantasy, if you do a movie and they like the character and they go through his trials and tribulations, whatever he goes through, and they suffer with him, then when he wins in the end, you win for everybody. They're all winning with you. But in my first movie, I was exactly the opposite. What do you, what, take that smack. What are you, what's so funny here? Huh? What are you laughing at? You got a job here. No one laughs in this theater. I tell you when to laugh. You understand? And another thing. About 22 years ago, I guess, I was uh, working in my club in New York, and this uh, guy comes over to me, so I have a cheap movie to do, a low budget. We went to location by subway, I told him, you know? And uh, I was a theater manager, but I was mean. Did he pay for those lemon drops? Nope. What are you, the Red Cross? What, is there a flood here? If you look at free candy, free lemon drops here? Pay for the lemon drops. Put some more gum drops over here. Keep it neat, neat. I'll send you back to the old country. Well, since the projectionist, my characters have been more likable. I'd give up a bone for you, cause that's how much you mean to me. When I first saw your face, my heart began to race. You fill my soul with ecstasy. Oh, I, you come here often? <laughs> I did my full-length animated feature called Rover Dangerfield. And uh, he sings one song that people all seem to really like. It's called, I'll Never Do It on a Christmas Tree. And a dog sings, <clears throat> I'll never do it on a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree is safe from me. Oh, what would Santa think of me if I did it on a Christmas tree? I'll soak in oak, I'll splash in ash. I'll do it on a peach or cherry. But if I sprinkle on a spruce, Christmas won't be merry. I'll never do it on a Christmas tree. Oh, what would Santa think of me? I'll hold it to eternity. I'll never do it on a Christmas tree. I'll never, 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 never do it on a Christmas tree. All right, that's your story, Rover. My favorite Rodney Dangerfield movie was Easy Money, where at the birthday party, he asked the little girl how old she was. Hey, how old are you? Well, call me when you're this, okay? I thought that was really funny. I like the scene in Easy Money where he's riding the bike because he has to lose all that weight. <laughs> Eddie Miles. Come on. Bit, bit, bit. Oh my. my favorite Rodney Dangerfield movie was Caddyshack. I loved it when he farted. <laughs> oh, somebody stepping a duck. <laughs> My favorite scene is when he does the triple loop D off the diving board and into the water. If I go to a schoolyard with you, any schoolyard at all, and the kid's about 10, 12 years old, they all want to know one thing from me. And back to school, did I really do that dive? That's what they want to know. <laughs> and one kid wrote me a letter. 
My name is Tommy, I'm 10 years old, and my friend Spencer said that you did the dive, and my mother says you didn't do the dive. Who's right, Rodney? So I wrote him back and I said, listen to your mama. <laughs> I guess I'm a guy who uh, people identify with. And when I check in the hotel and someone grabs my bag to carry it, I feel like I should be carrying it, you know? Uh, stuff like that. I mean, I'm a, uh, uh, I, I can never be a big shot, I guess. That's what it is. I'm one of the masses, and uh, maybe they know that. Well, here it was, the last day of the set. Oh, I made so many new friends. Now, remember, you're buying dinner for this, right? <laughs> I had a rap party so I could tell him just how I felt. Well, the movie Ladybugs is over. I had the time of my life, and I definitely want to work with all of you again. They're just the greatest. And I'm sure you feel the same way about me, huh? Where is my sting? 